Let's get started. So we're going to talk about email marketing and the importance of email marketing in your online strategy. So um, I wrote a blog post on this. We'll be posting it later to the group, but um, I was kind of joking that I am a Generation X uh, member, member of that generation, a Gen, a Gen Xer. So if you were a Gen Xer like me or even before that, you know, when email became mainstream, like with AOL, um, you know, your dial-up internet and you dial into your AOL email, it was a wonderful thing. I mean, you could send messages to people. I remember even in my first job after college, I was generally faxing messages to people. I was, um, there's a member in the group here that I used to work with at a software company. But um, anyway, when I would um, solve a problem, I, you know, had links and everything to pick up uh, packages and stuff for the software, but um, I would literally print that out and fax it to people. So um, I began using email, you know, right in my first job. And, you know, of course, a lot of you did have AOL accounts and dial up internet. So long time ago, not so long ago, but look how fast technology is running. So you've got mail is an actual thing. It's an actual phrase when you would get into your email account um, and you had new messages, it would say, you got mail. So it was a great way to communicate um, immediately and effectively. So over the past several years, email marketing has changed and it's evolved because they're, you know, once people got wind of it, of um, being able to use it for instant communication, um, you know, of course the bad guys jumped in and started spamming and growing your inboxes with junk and link bait clickbait is what it called. it's called, and of course, you know, social media started, Facebook, I don't remember what year that came out, 2006, yeah, we, they just had their 10-year anniversary, um, you know, people decided that, you know, they didn't need email maybe, because social media could communicate their message appropriately, but you might wonder to yourself, should you still be using email marketing, and the answer is yes, so um, regarding Facebook and getting your email or your message communicated, um, social, social media, of course, you can get your message across using posts and messaging and that kind of thing. So um, Facebook Messenger is generally the same as an email box. You know, people don't check them all the time or they delete messages that they don't want. So um, that should not be considered uh, replacement for email, but it definitely is a messaging, you know, thing that you can use within your strategy. But um, we still want to be using, it's still important to be using email marketing in your overall strategy because um, a little stat here, according to the Direct Marketing Association, email marketing efforts uh, returns $39 per $1 spent. So that's a pretty good return on investment. Um, another reason that you no problem, Morgan. Hey, how are you? Um, I just saw Morgan sign in. So um, if you're not convinced, a few more researched reasons why email marketing is still important for you is that, um, number one, I don't have this listed in my article, but, you know, on social media, we all know that algorithm changes has affected our reach. So you might post a message about your product or a tip or anything free value. I mean, you might feel like you're giving something for free and that people would want to see it, but... Um, the ch chances are like 10 to 20% of your followers are actually seeing your message. So in email, you know, chances are they are, you know, moving past your email or deleting it <coughs> or basically not reading it because, I mean, out in the industry, a good open rate is 20 to 30%, so um, even 10%. So, I mean, the same problems go across opening emails, but email is you know, the own domain of that user. If somebody, number one, somebody gave you their email address willingly, that means that they are interested in you as a person and they are interested in hearing from you. Whereas on social media, I mean, all of you might know this, I mean, might be experiencing this after, you know, our hugely historical contentious election is that how many posts across Facebook, I mean, raise your hand if you've seen so many crazy political posts, people's opinions going nuts over who won and who didn't win and why. And, you know, like it's obviously an important topic, but you know, you didn't ask for that to show up in your newsfeed. I know I didn't. I went out on Facebook that morning, the morning after, and it was just like, wow, you know, lots of emotion out there. Didn't necessarily want to see some of those posts at least out there. 
um, crazy stuff going on. And I, you know, and I can tell you one thing is I did not receive an email with any of those, those words or those article forwards or shares or whatnot, because I didn't ask for their opinion. You know what I mean? Like I give my email to who I want to hear from, what emails I want to open, um, you know, and I, and Meredith and I talk about this. I open 20 to 30% of my emails. I, I want to stay on the lands End email list because I enjoy their clothing. I enjoy their products. I want to pick up a good 40% off coupon every once in a while, but you know, seven out of 10 emails from lands End, I'm deleting. So that's just the way of life. But I wanted to be on their list. I will use a coupon when the time suits me. So whereas lands and posts, A, I might not see them because it might not fall into my algorithm on my Facebook. And uh, B, if I don't feel like buying something, I don't want to see it shoved in my face all the time. I want to be able to move past that. So a couple other reasons. Um, you can reach mobile users. 52% uh, of U.S. cell phone owners access their emails from their phones. I know I do. Um, in addition, three out of five business emails are opened on a smartphone. So um, you might feel like text would work together, work better to get your message out, but consider that um, email still rules because it works on your phone, it works on your desktop, it works on your laptop, it works on your iPad, it works on your other mobile tablet. Um, you know, you can get your email anywhere. And of course, um, email coupons. So a lot of places I know um, will shop at Hobby Lobby every once in a while for some crafts. And we specifically shop there because you can open up your email and get a 40% off 40 off coupon one item every trip. So um, you know, I open up my email and I'll print out that coupon. You can show it on your smartphone as well. That, that works just as good. But, um, you know, email gets the offers out there, gets the coupons out there. And um, I, for one, don't want anybody to text my phone that doesn't have my personal phone number because I gave it to them. And then uh, a final reason, email marketing is inexpensive. So in our Biz Nation group, this week on Monday, we started our new theme days. Monday, um, Biz Tip Mondays. Meredith went and showed you in a five minute quick video how to open up a free MailChimp account, which is one of the email providers out there. We happen to use Aweber, which is also inexpensive, but it's not free. Um, you can just open a free account up to 2,000 subscribers. I mean, that would take a while to build up. So for I mean, X amount of time you can use an email marketing software for free that will give you forms that people can submit their names and email addresses and you can insert a simple, quick, um, easy starter email series. So we would um, definitely encourage you to go out to the biz tip from this week, Monday, check out that video, go over to MailChimp.com and open up an account. Definitely, um, you know, recommend it, cannot recommend it enough. It allows you to reach your audience more directly than any other marketing effort, including uh, all your social medias. Twitter, of course, you know, tweets are flying by at the speed of light. Facebook, algorithm changes, you know, three out of 10 people are probably seeing your message. And social media is busy and fast. I mean, when I'm looking through my phone, you know, the thumb, I'm getting a cramp in my thumb because I'm just flipping through the feed when I have five extra money or five extra minutes in the pickup line at school. I'll look at Facebook. I'm most definitely not, you know, opening every link reading every message with intent. Um, every time you swipe, that little button on the top says new stories. So look how fast that's moving. Uh, email allows you to speak directly to your subscribers who gave you their email address on purpose, intentionally, Intentional Marketer University, and you are presenting your offers, new products, valuable posts, anything directly to their inbox. And they can save it there. So um, another thing on Facebook is I like to look at those tasty videos, you know, where they're, um, you know, showing the video of how to make something that looks delicious. How do I, how do I save that off to look at when I'm actually in my kitchen? I mean, you can save the link to the article, of course, but, and then go through the whole save links on Facebook. But um, my preference is if I receive something in email, I'll leave it at, a, at an unread stat status so I know to go back to it, or I will go and flag that. Um, email to go back to later so I can organize that way. So um, leads, if you haven't understood, we've been talking about content marketing and email leads. Leads, kind of vague terms, content marketing, but you need to know it if you want to be online. 
So continue to study and read our posts about content. Content is a simple concept. It's anything you're putting out there, like whether it be an article, a post, or you know, a video, that's considered content. So content marketing. And then leads. So I know when I got started in business before Intentional Marketer University, um, you know, I didn't have any sort of concept of leads. So when I got my back office materials, um, it said, you know, potential leads. So your plumber, your dentist, your blah, blah, blah. So the same thing goes online. You're looking for leads and in terms of lead information, it's in, in the form of an email address. You're not out there asking for phone numbers, although you could. Many lead forms allow you to ask for a phone number, but um, usually you're not. You're asking for an email address. And so um, that's a customer lead when you're talking about online marketing. And the basic laws of customer leads is that people only buy when they need something and number two, when they trust the source that they're buying it from. So do you ever buy something that you totally hate or you know you don't trust the source so you don't buy? Of course, so people buy those things that make them feel good because it either solves a problem for them or they think having it in their life will give them satisfaction. So load up, you know, you need a lead offer to bring in the lead. So make sure that your offer that you're asking people for their email address actually gives them, you know, trust. So you might put a couple of your customer, happy customers on your page and make it easy and fast for people to see the need for the product you have to offer. And then, you know, customers will only give you their email address when your offer is valuable to them. So you need to create real value for them. Um, this could be a video series on how to apply your concealer, how to apply your fiber lashes, um, how to apply your body wrap, or how, you know, what to pair your necklace with. Do you wear it with a blazer like this or a v-neck t-shirt? Would you wear it with a scoop neck t-shirt? You know, just simple, simple little videos of people like me who don't know how to pair jewelry with clothing. That would be a valuable a valuable video to me. So what can you give to them that's one step less than the actual product for free? Um, law number three is to keep it simple. The KISS principle, K-I-S-S, keep it super simple. Um, starting off in your email marketing can be simple, really simple if you stay focused. Put in front of your audience a valuable offer that they are willing to give you their email address for. Step away, you know, gives it one step away from your actual product. And then place it in the right spots. Where, where are your customers hanging out? We're talking about that all the time. Are they on Facebook or are they on Twitter? Or where can you find your perfect customer? <coughs> and um, keep it simple. And it's a reason to act, you know, give them a reason to act right now. So um, within how many, the infomercials that you see on TV say, accept this offer within one hour and receive 20% off. Or just give them some sort of incentive to act now. And uh, beyond that, social media makes the process even easier. So, um, you know, network marketing, for, for an example, where do people, how do they even reach enough people to make their business thrive before the internet or before social media? I mean, you have such a huge advantage to the Avon ladies from the 1980s. I mean, they were out there doing parties, walking the malls, stopping by businesses, stopping women at the grocery store. Um, you have social media. You can get out there and share information about your products, share the problems, the solutions to the problems that your product solves. I mean, you have 1.9 billion people on Facebook, 400 million people on Instagram alone to reach. So if you put out there something truly valuable in your industry, you can get the lead. And 40% of people spend more time socializing on, so, on social media than face-to-face. -face. <coughs> so when we're talking about le leveraging our time, it's not even worth it to go out to the mall and pound the pavement and pass out your cards. It, the time is more worth it, better spent on uh, curating the social media lead generating skills, content marketing skills that you need to know in order to make that time worth it for you. And um, beyond that, pick the right social media channel because your customers aren't and couldn't be hanging out on every single one. So YouTube is a big one. It's the second largest search engine to Google. How many times? <coughs> Sorry, I've just got a cough. Hold on. Um, how many times? 
how many times have you been out on YouTube to see how to fix something or how to do something? Um, I was just out on face or uh, YouTube looking at uh, Common Core Math, how to do Common Core Math. No idea. My daughter is in school doing Common Core Math, and I did not learn that way, and I don't do math anymore, so um, I have a calculator and a computer. So, yeah, I mean, I need to know how to do things, and visually on YouTube, I can learn quite quickly. And um, other ways that you can generate leads, and just the overarching concept of generating leads is synonymous or one in the same or one after another of um, email marketing because you need that email address to be able to start email communication with them. So another, you can still get free leads from Facebook and Instagram. You don't have to pay for ads all the time. You can use contests on Facebook. People like to win things for free. They enjoy the competition. You can um, utilize your real estate on Facebook, meaning Use your email uh, or your Facebook header to click off onto your lead page. So make sure your header tells them what's to offer in your lead offer and gives like a flat out arrow pointing to the sign up page to grab your lead uh, offer. And again, on Instagram has 58 or you know, Meredith quotes 68% more engagement than Facebook. So, um, you know, Instagram is a huge ground for loyal customers, possible loyal customers loyal customers. So, um, you know, figure out your Instagram strategy, figure out what works on Instagram. We have our masterclass out on our website if you're interested, but you can, you know, figure out what works on Instagram, start targeting your followers. I mean, once you get your content, your posting strategy down, you figure it out that you put your link in the bio, then, you know, your current followers will begin enjoying what you have to offer. But how do you bring new blood into into your environment. Those are the true skills that you need, how to target followers, how to find them based on your research. So make it available. Make your um, lead information available. Make it easy to click. Give a call to action saying, hey, I have this video to show you exactly how to do this. Click on it here and um, go with it. So um, that is the crux of email marketing is grabbing the email address, providing something with value, and begin talking to your potential customer. So from there, I will, you know, I'm hoping I've convinced you to go out to MailChimp and start an account if you haven't already. But I have some 10 ideas, and I'll post this out on our blog post um, later today, of other types of emails you can say. So um, don't get overwhelmed with email marketing. Don't say, oh, I have so much to do. That's just one more thing that I have to add to my plate. Uh, with my online marketing strategy, it doesn't have to be that way. As long as you're consistent, I know with um, or with IMU, we email you guys. Um, those of you who are on our list, we email you once a week. We have a blog post that goes out on Wednesdays, and we email our list once a week. So for our strategy, is um, this is one of the ten is you can send an email newsletter out to your list, giving them latest news, latest product promotions, and then your latest article out on your blog. That's an idea. Number two, you can create a rewards club. You can use an exclusive club to make your subscribers feel welcome and uh, special, get them excited about products coming out um, in your business or in your affiliation or in turn network marketing business. You can generate excitement. Say, hey, this is being released on December 11th. This is what it does. I'm so excited. Um, if you want to join the rewards club, get 10% off your first order or something like that. Then, of course, you can use your email like you do in social media and show uh, the personal side to your business, which is um, behind the scenes type emails. Use email to re recap a conference that you just attended in your industry. So if you went to, let's say, a health and wellness event or conference, you could list the top five speakers and what you learned from them, or you can recap the latest office event that you've done or a charity event. You could show pictures of you serving a meal to a soup kitchen or something like that. Um, use email to showcase a customer, a happy customer, a customer success story. You can um, put in screen prints um, of their you know, happy email or the testimonial that they provided for your website. You can do a top 10 list, 
out on our blog post that is out there later, um, you can create an email that, shop, that shares the top tips for using one of your products and how they can enhance what they've learned and implement with your services. So um, you could say the top 10 exercises for losing weight or the top 10 ingredients for fat burning or um, anything like that. Um, top 10 restaurants to visit in the Dallas area, something like that. Just give something valuable in a top 10 list post or list email. Uh, blog post roundup. I get um, one of the local guys I follow around here where I live. He sends out an email every week um, of his favorite blog posts from the week. So they're not his blog particularly. I think one out of the six he uh, provides in this list, but the other five are from other websites. It's just industry news that he's found in, in, uh, important and um, relevant to the industry, which is online marketing. <coughs> you can do theme emails throughout the year. So there's a cool list out on verticalresponse.com. I linked it out on our blog post, but it shows uh, January through December. It lists unique holidays that are uh, part of the month. So you could create theme emails um, around that stuff. So obviously in Thanksgiving, here in the United States at least, it's um, or in November, it's Thanksgiving. So you could create like, you know, a turkey time, turkey time email or something like that. Like, you know, get, get stuffed with value or get stuffed, you know, with my product. I don't know. I'm like making up stuff, but something with stuffing or be thankful. I'm thankful for you. Happy Thanksgiving, something like that. Um, number nine, we did this a couple weeks ago. We asked for feedback from our list. We created a survey, again, on a free tool called um, SurveyMonkey and asked people to say, you know, hey, how are we doing? Are we providing you with what you want to learn? Like, what else would you like to learn? What's your biggest struggle? You know, we want detailed information from our list so that we can curate and create uh, blog posts and videos and biz tips on how we can help you and how we can further your business more. We don't, there's nothing more we want more than to give you relevant information. <coughs> I'm sorry, all this talking is making my throat itch. So uh, number 10 is a reminder email. So if you have a sale going on or something like that, you can use your email list to say, hey, this price isn't going to be valid for much longer. So be sure to go out to this link and check it out and see if it's for you. So email marketing can bring real revenue into your business. So uh, think beyond your social media posts. Um, if you've done any reading out in online marketing, social media marketing is that people rarely buy right from social media. They rarely click the link right off of social, you know, 10, 7% of the time to actually make a purchase. Um, you need to be nurtured and brought down the journey, the customer journey of, hey, this is a cool product, but do I need it? Um, yeah, this is a cool product. I need it, but I can't afford it. Oh, um, they offer me a three-month payment plan, so maybe I can afford it. So you're walking your customers through that journey, and you can't do that on social media because you don't know who was actually thinking about buying your product until they actually give you a signal in the way of giving you their email address and um, from there you can start talking to them and weeding out and bringing in the people that are actually interested in what you want to show them. So that's it. That's email marketing in a nutshell. Again, I uh, encourage you to go out to check out MailChimp and start an account. Um, we would love to see a lot of, you know, if you're able to bring up MailChimp and start a campaign, um, that would be great. Post it out here in the comments of this video or on the group in general. Say, you know, hey, I started MailChimp. I got my first email out. What do I do now? We'd be happy to throw ideas out there for you. You know, our blog post that I will be posting a little bit later is uh, gives you those 10 ideas that I just went through, and you can save those off and um, start knocking through them. Send one email a week. I gave you 10 ideas. There's 10 weeks worth of email content that you can go from. So um, there's a wealth of information out there on the internet. There's a wealth of information here in IMU Biz Nation. 
please feel free to post your questions, um, get the answers out there for the good of the group, or if you are shy and don't want to post to everyone, go ahead and send us a message. Um, I would love to help you. We'd love to help you. Meredith and I are here to help. So I hope you have a great Wednesday and enjoy the rest of your day and enjoy your journey in email marketing. Have a good one.